and daughters sing and dance to the beat and the rhythm of the drum. Drink the waters flowing in the rivers and the mountains so high. Could it be that the church has missed the plot by thinking the Old Testament is irrelevant? Would God work so hard with the patriarchs of old and the prophets to write in a book for future generations and then say it is useless? Perhaps the better questions we need to ask are, what secrets are encoded in the Torah that would equip modern generations to master their economies? Are they secrets? hidden in the life of Abraham that would enable a business to become a blessing to a generation? Was the African continent born for oppression and slavery? Dr. Tich Tananyua has had several encounters with God that have moved him to writing the Wealth Mastery Trilogy. Three powerful books that are loaded with biblical evidence that God wants you wealthy. In these encounters, Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa has invested over 7,000 hours of research going through the Torah to unravel the ancient secrets of the Hebrew nation. The books will enable the reader to discover how to break free from financial and economic slavery, wisdom to manage personal finances and establish generational wealth, how to use your wealth to change the world for the good of mankind. God's plan has always been to establish the earth as a colony of heaven. As in the words of the Messiah, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. These three books will bring you back to the understanding of the original purpose for wealth and position you to be a world shaker. From housewife to CEO, from street vendor to president, from children to business leaders, you need to get this wisdom not just in your head, but in your spirit. Prepare to go on your greatest journey ever. And uh, I'm sure you are super blessed both by the song and the advert. I don't know if you bought your copies or your set of the trilogy, uh, the Judeo Abrahamic Wealth Factor, Wealth Masters of the Economy, and uh, Birthing a Mega Economy, The Rise of the African Continent. I'm so excited about the content in these books because it really challenges us and challenges who we are as the African continent and begins to bring us to that place where we need to be aware of what God has called us to, what God has placed upon us as a continent.
In this season, God is building a new system, a establishing in the church, in the body of Christ, right across Africa, a new system that helps us understand that the kingdom economics are vital, a new system of running our lives, running our churches, running our businesses, and becoming kingdom financiers. I want to welcome you tonight. This is Dr. Tich Tanyaniwa. In 52 days of rebuilding the walls of Africa, we have been going on this wonderful marathon of praying for Africa, speaking over Africa, challenging one another as part of the African continent to say, let us arise for our, this is our day. This is our time to shine and show forth the glory of God. So this is indeed a good time for you to call your friends, brothers, sisters that are white, that are somewhere else in the house, call them and say, come to the lounge or come to wherever it's warm. If you have a fire in the fireplace, that's good. Or you're in front of a heater somewhere. But praise God, uh, Johannesburg has been chilly and you could be somewhere in Nigeria. I, I was told today, Nigeria is, was warm and our guest is actually from Nigeria and we're going to be, he's going to be joining us in the studio in the next few minutes. So uh, hopefully I'll start feeling a little bit warmer than I am right now. I've got my tea in my special mug, my Africa birthing a mega economy Africa cup. You better order yours right now and have some coffee with me. Praise God. Mm. Lovely coffee right there. And uh, as we begin, let's pray for our country today. Our country is Niger. We're praying for the country of Niger. And uh, this is day 19. The Republic of Niger, we've been praying for each, uh, each day. We're taking one particular country that we pray for, that we stand around and just speak a word over. And then we, we get joined in the studio by a captain of industry. And we are focusing currently on the arts. We we had uh, Harold Moyer yesterday, and now we're going to have one of the, 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 the young ministers that has been under him. He's been mentoring and coaching and raising up as a contemporary musician. And we're going to have a great time today. So let's talk about Niger and pray for Niger. Uh, um, and when we say Niger, I know sometimes people think we're talking Nigeria because they like to say, hey, Niger, Niger. No, this is Niger, the country, okay? Uh, total area of 1.267, 1.2 uh, million uh, square kilometers. And the president is Mohamedou Isu. Isof Isiofau since 2011. The capital is near me, and the, the currency is West African franc. Nationality is uh, Nigerian, and uh, the other languages is French, Hausa, and uh, I think this is Dijerma. I hope that's correct. Um, the religion is predominantly Muslim, then there's Christians, and then there is the animists. Independence was gained in 1960. Niger is the largest country in West Africa. Over 80% of the land is covered by the Sahara Desert. And um, the country shares its borders with Libya, Chad, Niger uh, Nigeria, Benin, Senegal, Mali, Algeria. And more than 50% of Niger's population belongs to the Hausa uh, uh, tribe. The economy, this is the interesting part, the economy. We're talking about birthing mega economies in our African states and right across from Cape to Cairo. Is it possible for us to have economies that will sustain the people, sustain the, 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 the resources and be able to grow and develop to the next level? The answer is a resounding yes. Africa is a blessed continent, prosperous continent, a continent that is Full of so many resources. So let's look at the economy of Niger. The, the economy centers on subsistence crops, livestock, and some of the world's largest uranium deposits. Some of the world's largest uranium deposits. Agriculture contributes approximately 40% of the GDP and provides livelihood for over 80% of the population. As a landlocked nation, mineral exports account for, more, for much of the country's GDP. Real GDP growth is estimated at a wonderful 6.4% in the 2019 period and continues to grow. And we're trusting that it'll uh, go to the next level even into 2020. 
And that's beautiful. You notice a lot of the, the countries are experiencing real GDP growth, positive growth. It's on a positive. Whether it's 2.5% or 6.2%, there is some kind of growth. But we're believing that we can accelerate this growth. The country's crude oil reserves are close to 300 million barrels of fuel. Uh, because of the lack of refining capacity, however, the country has had, uh, has had a, re a has had to rely on imports for refined petroleum. That's not a good statistic, but praise God, they've got the resource. We've got to find a way to move to the final product. Natural resources consist of uh, uranium. Niger sits on some of the world's largest uranium deposits, coal, iron ore, tin, phosphates, gold, and petroleum. Agricultural products consist of millet, sorghum, rice, corn, uh, fruits, vegetables, cotton, peanuts, cassava, and uh, cow peas. Industries consist of uranium mining, cement, bricks, textiles, food processing, and chemicals. Export commodities, iron ore, ura uranium ore, livestock, peanuts, cotton, cow peas, and onions. Exports, uh, export partners are France, 53.1%, USA, 18%, Nigeria, 20.3%, Burkina Faso, 5.5%. That's good exports going on there. But again, it's one of those where we need to move to more, uh, more of export of end products rather than raw materials. Education. The education sector in Niger faces several challenges that have negatively affected the sector's progress. The education uh, and training sector plan a 2014 to 2024 uh, plan to reaffirm and uh, commit to its growth and investing more into education. And the plan is quite comprehensive and quite detailed. I'm not going to go into the, 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 the points on that because that's a lot of time, but I'm excited by the fact that they are working on improving their education. So we need to be able to pray for them, stand with them, and believe God that the, the process of investing in education, because literacy, numeracy, the education sector is always very, very fundamental to what happens to the GDP or economic growth. Natural beauty of Niger, very beautiful. The Niger River is the third largest river in Africa after the Nile and the Congo. It gives the country, countries of Nigeria, Niger, their names. Uh, unlike the Nile, it is, uh, that is unclear, the Niger River is clear over the whole course. This is attributed to the absence of silt. The river is 36, uh, this river has 36 families of freshwater fish, nearly 200 and fish, uh, 250 fish species. Uh, 20 of these are found nowhere else in the planet. Woo! Again, something unique, absolutely unique. Every country in Africa has a number of unique factors that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. The country has one of the world's largest protected reserves covering 7.7 .7 million hectares of land. They have cheetah, oryx, and uh, gazelle found in there in great quantities. Um, there, there was a dinosaur discovered in, in Niger, uh, believed to have been uh, around 115 to 150 million years ago. Now, we know from a biblical perspective that the time frames that they give us when they talk about dinosaurs are incorrect. However, Christians sometimes have a challenge believing where the dinosaurs did exist. The Bible says in those days there were giants in the land. So there were giants, both human giants and um, animal giants that existed. But the time frames and the process of carbon dating is absolutely incorrect now. We could do a whole teaching on that, but not for today. The people and the culture, there are two festivals held um, by indigenous communities, namely the Salt Cure Festival and the celebration of uh, Toreg uh, nomads. And by the way, the Toreg, the name of the Toreg comes from these uh, sand dunes and they use that to, 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 uh, to go over the dunes and do a whole festival.
festival of car festival out there traditional sports such as horse racing camel racing wrestling etc are big in uh, niger niger has a rich cultural history having been the stomping uh, ground of some of africa's most notable empires and kingdoms the sogai empire the mali kingdom were uh, domiciled in this territory wonderful statistics and information about this wonderful beautiful um uh, country that we have right here in our continent aren't you blessed to be part of the african continent aren't you blessed to be in this beautiful land that god has bestowed with so much beauty so many amazing resources i believe that we are blessed and like i've been saying in this season we will see an acceleration of the economies an acceleration of the work of God in building local governments, building structures of leadership, building infrastructure, building vision, building education, and all the seven mountains that we'll be looking at. So right now, I want us to take a minute just to pray for the country of Niger. Let's agree right now. Father, one of the major areas that Niger has need of is improvement in its education system. We pray right now for an invasion of the right people, the right leaders, the right caliber of people that are visionary, that will be able to steer the education in Niger in the right direction. Father, we pray that the government will have a vision that values the people, loves the people, and honors the people in the name of Jesus, that we will see a continued growth in economic development, particularly in agriculture and processing our agricultural products, in mining and coming up with final products and not just raw materials. Father, I pray that you will raise up economists in, in Niger that will have a vision for building the economy so that it will benefit the people. Your word declares that when the righteous are in authority, there, there will be joy and rejoicing in the city. I pray for a rising up of righteous leaders, a rising up of men and women that have a vision and a love for the kingdom of God and for the agenda of God. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you for economic development and agriculture development and educational development in Niger in Jesus name amen and amen and amen praise God I want to throw in just one quick nugget uh, and please let us know where you're watching from give us a like give us a thumbs up let us know where you're watching from we love you we appreciate you we welcome you to 52 days of rebuilding the walls of Africa now, we've been talking a little bit about what poverty is and how poverty operates in attacking people and how God wants there to be no poor amongst us. Yesterday we looked at Luke chapter 4 quoted from Isaiah 61 uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me and we established the first thing Jesus was anointed to do was to address the economic factor or economic arena of human existence. The anointing is designed to bring economic emancipation. Once the anointing begins to work in your life, poverty must go. Now, poverty is one of those words that's difficult to comprehend because in our minds, we always picture poor people as those people that are on the streets begging with a bowl or living in shacks, etc. But according to the Bible, poor is not having anything or sufficient resources to sustain yourself not having anything or sufficient resources to sustain yourself to become a beggar a pauper or starving or toiling for daily sustenance starving or toiling for daily sustenance and according to the statistics i've, I've shared this before but let me just bring this up again according to statistics there is an average of 80 to 90, and in some cases up to 95% in different countries. Some countries are at 80%, some are at 90, some are at 95% of their populations are living in consumptive debt. That means most people in most countries, and this is not just Africa, but right across the globe, are living in consumptive debt. They cannot afford to pay for their food, their clothes. They're living on debt. So it's a credit-based system. You borrow money in order to pay bills. You borrow money in order to eat food. You borrow money in order to put on clothes, in order to get furniture, in order to get a vehicle, a house. Now, that was never God's plan. 
So if we are in that space where we need to borrow money from our future in order to sustain our present, then we qualify. And I know this is quite raw, crude, and tough to swallow. According to the Bible, you are poor. You need to break out of poverty. And God wants us to live in abundance. And this message really gets attacked a lot when we talk about debt-free living. And I mean, Kenneth Copeland has been under attack for many years. And the, the people that we've tagged and called the so-called prosperity preachers, they're preaching the Bible. That's the Bible. The Bible is a prosperity book, in case you didn't know it. Because God wants you to break out of poverty. You should not be borrowing money from your tomorrow, your next year, in order to sustain yourself. Right now, the countries of Africa, Africa have borrowed money from the IMF, from the World Bank, from all over the place in order to survive. We are borrowing our children's inheritance or legacy and consuming it now so that when our children arrive and it is their time, they're arriving into an empty inheritance. And that is not the plan of God. The Bible makes it clear that the, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children children's children and the, the 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 wealth of the wicked is stored up for the the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just that's what the word of god says so if i am a good man I must be living according to the word of God and according to the principles of the word of God, which means I leave a legacy. I leave an inheritance for my children. I must not consume their legacy. I must not consume their, their, their wealth and their resources. I must be able to structure my economy now and eradicate poverty so that we are able to invest into their future rather than eat from their future. So let's make a quality decision that I do not want to be poor anymore. So we see from the word of God as I close and move to our studio where our, our, our guest is coming in and I'm telling you, you're going to love our guest today. Oh my goodness, he's a, he's a powerful, powerful musician. Um, in closing, uh, poverty is designed by Satan to enslave us. The Bible says the, 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 the one who borrows becomes a servant to the one who lends. The word servant then means a slave. You become a slave the moment you open an account with a store, a departmental store, furniture store, um, pharmacy, whatever it is. The moment you have an account where you are buying stuff on account to pay over the next six months, the next one year, the next three years, you have become a slave to whoever you have borrowed from. And right now, I know a lot of people are probably slaves to uh, a store where they're getting clothes and another store where they got their lounge suite, another store where they got their TV, another store where they got their cell phone, another store where they're getting their food and grocery, and another store where they're doing their hair and their nails and whatever it is. So you have seven slave masters that you're paying, some over six months, some over one year, some over five years, some over 25 years. You are in a bond. You are in a bondage. You are in a mortgage, a death contract and you need to make a quality decision to say i'm going to change my life i'm going to go in a different direction i'm going to activate kingdom economics and get myself free and that's what all of this is all about so if you have not gotten yourself any one of these three books that are displayed right here you need to get them birthing a mega economy how do i birth a mega economy and begin to see financial increase in my life how do i master my economy so that I don't become a slave to a system that is wicked, that will drain me of my very life. And by the time I retire at 65, I've been drained working for everybody else except myself. So now I have to join the pensioners queue in order to get a 5%, 10% discount. That is not the plan of God. So I want to encourage you, get into this content, read these books, go to my website. We've got all the details here about birthing a mega economy. Dot Africa, you will get the resources, the whole trilogy, and it will be a blessing to you. Right now, I'm excited. I want to go over 
and join our our guest uh, and have a great conversation so get your notebook get some wisdom if you know somebody who's a musician we're doing the mountain of the arts today and for the next few days if you know somebody who's a musician share this link with them and tell them they need to watch this urgently let's invite our guest into studio right now well, ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing what God has been doing in Africa. Welcome to day 18 of 52 days of rebuilding the walls of Africa. I'm so excited about the response, the feedback, the comments that we're getting from people and how people are being blessed. Yesterday, we started the mountain of the arts and the music and arts industry. And we had Harold Moyo, who gave us some amazing nuggets. And a couple of people in different worship teams were actually giving me feedback on how they really got blessed by by the session so today we have limo blaze my goodness this is one of the leading uh, gospel artists contemporary gospel artists from nigeria and his music is impacting africa i got to do some listening yesterday to one of his power in fact two of it, his tracks one was himself and the other was with um uh, with is it flame not flame, uh, the, the, truth, truth. the truth. Yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the piece that you yeah. did with the truth. And I, I, I've been young all my life and I've always loved hip hop. <laughs> I, was, I was one of those hip hop guys on the streets before I got yeah. saved. Then I got saved and I got into gospel hip hop and I've always loved it. Yeah. So we have Limo Blaze today, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Nigeria. And he's going to tell us a little about himself and then we're going to get into some real meat about the arts industry across Africa. Limo Blaze, welcome. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, first of all, I must say that I'm really honored to be on this platform, just to be able to like speak to people from different places around the world. It's a real honor for me. I do not take it lightly. So first of all, thank you. Uh, yes, this is Limo Blaze. The name is Limo Blaze. I am uh, a Christian urban artist in Nigeria, but not limited to Nigeria. Uh -huh. uh, my, my, my music, it's it's usually for the demographic of the young, but yeah, um, my 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 aim whenever I make music is to be able to speak to people, remind people of God's love, God's word, and just inspire a generation to go ahead with the Great Commission. And then just, I'm I'm, I'm one of the people out here who is push, letting young people know that it is really cool to be young and be a Christian. Mm. So that's that's my ammo. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And and I really love the way that your music is very contemporary and very fresh yeah. and very appealing to, to young people. We yeah. we can find you on Limo Blaze. That's your that's one of your Facebook pages, is that correct? Yeah, my Facebook is Limo Blaze, Instagram Limo Blaze underscore. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Beautiful. So you can find him, Limo Blaze and Limo Blaze underscore on Instagram. Beautiful contemporary music. One of the things that we have as a challenge uh, is that Africa at one time was so caught up with music from outside. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. But we began, we began to neglect our own artistic expression. There is such yeah. beauty yeah. in 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 the sound of Africa. What has been your experience as an artist uh, uh, coming up and rising up as an artist in this generation in terms of the difference in uh, African music and, and uh, yeah. Western music? So, so the beautiful thing about African music is that African music is so rich. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when, I, when I started making music, obviously everybody is usually boxed into that mindset of, oh, you have to sound American, you have to sound like this, you have to make Western music. But luckily for me, I was one of the persons that was able to understand early enough to take pride in what is my heritage and what is my sound. And I actually got to a point where I realized that the Western world appreciates your African music. Yeah. I usually tell some of my friends that it is, it is, for myself as an artist, I, I think of myself as a global brand. Yeah. So the music I make, I think export. I'm exporting my music. Mm -hmm. And I tell some of my friends, some of my friends that it is quite difficult mm -hmm. to export Western music to the Westerners. Oh because you got it. It. Is, it, it. it is what they have. Like you, you really cannot do anything that is different from what they know. No matter how good you are, 
you can't do you can you can't do someone's cultural sound more than them. But then when you come with the African sound, they are excited because they do not know this sound. Mm -hmm. It is fresh to them. And the earlier a lot of Africans begin to understand this fact and take pride in it. And also the fact that there's a lot of Africans in diaspora mm -hmm. and you're exporting the music to them. You're making that African rich sound. There are a lot of people in diaspora who want every opportunity to feel connected to their native land. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. So you making... The, African music is so rich. Mm -hmm. I listen to music from all genres and there's nothing that there's nothing that I would put on par with African music. African music is so rich, it's so beautiful and it has been it has been it has worked greatly for me. Mm -hmm. Because if, if I even check out my the back end of my music platforms, the most of my listeners are Westerners. Wow. That's interesting. The majority of my of the majority of my listeners are Westerners because African music is just so exciting. You cannot, you cannot deny music that is that good. Oh yeah, oh so yeah. I, I take, I take pride, I take pride in calling myself an African artist and making African music. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now, what would, what would your word be to maybe a musician in Africa who is having or going through some kind of an identity crisis and thinking, what should I do? The, their natural expression is beautiful in the African music, but there's the pressure to say, make yourself fresh. Like you said, you, you had to deal with that to say, am I going to be a secondhand copycat of Western music or am I going to be the yeah. best brand of African uh, music. What would you say to an artist who's rising up and going through that that quandary, that challenge of my identity? You touched on brand as well. Talk a little yeah, about that yeah. and tell us about how to build that brand, how to have that confidence to express yourself fully. So, uh, first things first, I usually don't like to tell people that this is what you should do. I mm -hmm. like to tell people to test the waters. Do mm -hmm. not limit yourself. Because most times what makes a lot of people want to stay in a particular box is because they have mentally limited themselves. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm just going to tell every artist, let yourself be free. Express yourself. Check, I mean, it, the music you make. So there are, there are some African artists who their, their Western sound mm -hmm. feels like it is what, it, what is the real thing to them. Mm -hmm. Because some persons were exposed to, to Western okay. music right from a very young age, so mm -hmm. they are not so rich in their culture. But if you're one of those persons that you have, like the, the culture is there in you, the, the sound is there in you, the key word is just explore. Mm -hmm. Explore. Okay. But I assure you, I assure you as an African, if you take pride in your sound, now most, most times, the first time you come out there, you probably would not get the feedback you want. But if you stay on it, Mm -hmm. Take pride in your sound. Everybody appreciates someone who takes pride and ownership in what is their own. Mm -hmm. All oh, it yeah. takes is time. So if you if you explore, take time. But trust me, it never gets it never gets more original yeah. than what is actually your culture. That's beautiful. I like that phrase. Take pride in your sound. Have you patented that yeah. one? <laughs> yeah. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. Okay. Now in in terms of um, one of the key factors that I'm trying to explore in everything that we're doing is the economic yeah. side of what we are doing. What is your view in terms of the economic side? Is it viable to pursue a music uh, career? Is it viable to become a, 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 a musician who's going to go on tours and who's going to do concerts? I know there was a time when we sold music and it was on the old, you know, the records many yeah. years ago. Yeah. I don't know if you're young yeah. enough to remember those. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> then we then we moved to cassette tapes, then we moved to CDs, and now it's Spotify, it's uh, iTunes, yeah. It's, yeah. it's digital platforms. How uh, is it viable to pursue, economically viable to pursue a music career? And if yes, what can I do? How can I brand myself to be contemporary and to, uh, the Bible says a man's gift will make room for him. How can I make my gift yeah, as a musician yeah. really uh, become an economic uh, supply for me? Yeah. So uh, first things first, it is very viable. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the first thing. Okay. It is. I mean, I am a living testimony. Okay. Uh, 
I I make I make I make I make a whole lot of money from music. Mm. On being being that was never the goal when I got into music because music for me was like ministry first. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, when, when I started making music, a lot of people around me told me, if you're going to make gospel music, you're not going to make money. So people had already fed me that mindset. And I told myself this, that, look, I'm going to be a rich person in this life. Mm-hmm. But it, it didn't necessarily need to be for music. Mm-hmm. That's what I told myself. Mm-hmm. So I already had my mindset that, okay, I'm not coming into this music to make money. It's about ministry and strictly ministry. Okay. But along the way, God began to open doors and then there's a thing about always educating yourself as, as an artist mm-hmm. you need to educate yourself you need to study what works you need to study what is working at the moment I am an artist here in Africa and I'm doing millions of streams in YouTube Spotify and all of this is money mm-hmm. and the good thing is the, the larger the larger proportion of my streams do not come from Africa wow the larger proportions of my stream comes from Europe comes from America so I always tell artists think export if you're thinking export wow wow this is good this is good yeah yeah so always think export do not do not limit yourself one educate yourself always like education is a continuous thing because what is working today might not necessarily be what is working tomorrow mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so if you constantly stay educated you see where the train is moving to that's good and you and, and you make sure you are pitching for yourself for every stop where the train is heading to. Yeah, yeah. So constantly educate yourself. Think export. There's a whole lot of my, it, like in this era right now is the most beautiful time to be an independent artist. Mm-hmm. I have been I have been an independent artist for the most part of my career. I mean I just got it. I just finally signed my first deal uh, a month ago. And mm-hmm. my first deal it, it didn't come from a place of oh I'm struggling to find a deal. It was you. There's the conversation. I had leverage in power. I was able to say, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. And guess what? My deal is an American deal. My deal is from an American company. Okay. Because they actually see, they actually see that, oh, there's a lot of prospects in this. This mm-hmm. is really, really, really valuable. So you just have to think exports. And I usually advise most people, study and learn how to be an independent artist. Uh-huh. A lot of artists are just looking forward to to, to hand me down she's just waiting and hoping oh a label is just gonna come give you all the money <laughs> it is, it's a lazy way to think oh 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 i like that i like that even even the even the labels out there labels are more interested in artists that can drive themselves yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That can push themselves that's how it works so educate yourself think exports and then think collaborations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. collaborations is key the beautiful thing about african culture is when you export African culture, you can bring in other influences into African culture and create experiences people have not heard. Oh, Limo Blaze, Limo Blaze, you yeah. can drop the mic. You can drop the mic. That's oh, brilliant okay. stuff, man. Earlier, earlier this year, I thought about it. I, I listened to, to Latin music and I pictured what if you mixed Latin music and African music together? Uh-huh. What, it would, what, what would it sound like? Wow. And I thought, okay, let's try this. And I, I reached out to to Latin, to a Latin artist, and we related, and was like, okay, let's do this, and we made a song that had an Afrobeat vibe with Latin melodies, and it's doing crazy. Wow! It's everywhere in, on radio in Panama, in Costa Rica, I've had the number one song in Costa Rica for three months. Whoa! I've, I've never been in Costa Rica, <laughs> and since the song came out, <laughs> the strings of the song has been crazy. Like the numbers are out there. That is, and I have a lot of following from. What happens is the people from Costa Rica and from Panama listen to that one song. Oh, now they know who Limo Blaze is. Mm-hmm. So they go back to go and check all of Limo Blaze's music. Whoa, there we go. There we go. Exactly. So think export, think collaboration. Go outside your circle. Reach out to people. Collaborations help a lot. Reach out to people. But I promise you this, the economic standpoint of making music. But first things first, if you're a Christian artist, your heart needs to be right. If your heart is right, oh, come on. and you know what you're doing, you're doing it for the kingdom, and mm-hmm. it's not solely about money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay to make money, but money is not the goal. But mm-hmm. don't forget the money. Yeah, yeah. Money isn't the goal, but don't forget the money. So educate yourself, and I promise you, there's mm. a whole world of possibilities out there. Wow. Wow, Limo, you you are hitting us with a whole bunch of nuggets here. This is this is brilliant stuff that that 
any artist yes. who's really seeking to to get out there should know you know one of the things that i'm yes. picking up in the conversation and also in my conversation with uh with harold particularly about you in in hitting your yes. your your millions in terms of um your your ratings yeah. i mean you've done you've done so well and and as africa we are yeah. proud of you but what it's reminding me of proverb says do you see a man who is diligent in his business in his he way. will not stand before mean men he will stand before great men yeah. and i see the diligence yeah. diligence to research you're talking about educating and developing yourself yeah. and that's that's yeah. That's one of the keys that's missing with musicians. They want somebody yeah. else to do the work. The manager do yeah. the work. You do this. And they just remain in this place of ignorance about the industry. It, no wonder they exactly. end up no wonder they end up signing contracts where they're getting five yeah. percent of a deal that they yeah. could have gotten more. So I'm loving the fact that you're emphasizing the diligence, the hard work, the passion, the focus, and the zeal. Brilliant, brilliant. Do you yeah. coach musicians? Oh, so yeah, I have, I have, I have like some, like it's not something I do like professionally. This is what I do, but I'm always out there talking to my peers and educating them. As a matter of fact, what I'm, I'm setting up a company uh -huh. right now with my manager, and what we aim to do mm -hmm. is to be able to help African artists beautiful get rich. Like a lot of African artists out there do not understand the idea of exporting music, distribution, uh -huh. how it works, yeah. how to position yourself rightly to get the right so the, the idea for for the company is to be able to offer what could be termed as record label services to yeah. artists without the artist being in a record label oh so wow you as an independent artist can approach the brand and okay you have a project to release and then oh you you collaborate with us and then we have a plan we'll let you know this is what it's going to take if you have a budget we we'll help you apply your budget judiciously to the to the various sectors where to get you the maximum feedback and the, the, the maximum results mm -hmm. on. so but yeah from time to time i still talk to artists and i mean just whenever people need to know i mm -hmm. help them okay oh I that's mean, it, it is it is one of it is one of my desires to see african artists up there and you know doing their thing Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. Now, in, yeah. as we get to a, to, to a closing, would you like to just speak over Africa and, and prophesy over Africa? Yeah. Tell us, what do you see? What should we expect um, yeah. us as the audience in terms of what we'll receive and what should the artists be getting themselves ready for? What preparation, what changes, what shifts? Uh, what yeah. do you see the next five years, the next 10 years, the music industry in yeah. Africa? I mean, any, anybody who is sensitive enough would already know that the shift is coming to Africa. Africa is the future right now. Mm -hmm. Africa, in as much as all the craziest happens in Africa, we have a lot of bad governance in Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa is the future. Africa is a virgin land that hasn't, that hasn't been tapped even close to half of what it has. Mm. And the moment Africans begin to realize who we are, we are supposed to see we are we should be proud yeah. we should be proud because we we have all it takes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it only takes it takes a level of vision for you to actually realize that we actually have all it takes mm -hmm. when you think about when you think about even the markets we have the numbers mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have the numbers so we everybody just has to position themselves rightly be proud of who you are. Be, be proud of the African in you. Stop shying away. Like, do you know what I, I have noticed? Uh -huh. I am one person that I have, I have interacted with a lot of American artists, like big American artists. Mm -hmm. The biggest ones in my genre. Mm -hmm. Like, I have had access to them. The, the Truths, the Lecrae, and the one thing that fascinates them the most about me mm -hmm. is how African I am and how I decide to stay African. Wow. Wow. I jump wow. I jump I jump on a song with a that truth. I jump on a song. So when I when I was much younger as an artist, I used to see African artists who did collaborations with American artists and they tried to sound American and I was always annoyed. <laughs> and I used to tell myself, if I grew up and I became in the post I became I became an artist in the position to collaborate with a Western artist, I am not going to sound any bit less in fact I will sound more intentionally African Whoa. than I usually sound in my mother song. Exactly. So when I make music with, with Westerners, I use more of my local language. And I have found that this fascinates them the most. So take pride. Every African artist right there, out there, 
take pride in your culture, take pride in your sound. You are African, you are proud, you are the future. Oh, understand this and take charge. Take charge. The field is there for you. Take charge. All you need to do is take charge. Come to the realization of this and take charge. The world is yours for the taking. Wow, the world is yours for the taking. That is powerful. That is powerful. Man, I'm, I'm so inspired. I, I'm enjoying this so, so, so much. And I know the audience really are getting blessed by, by the wisdom and the powerful stuff that you're, that, you're, that you're bringing out. You know, one of the things we are on day, I think day 18 today. But one of the things that's yeah. been interesting right from the beginning is each one of the African countries has got resources that have not been tapped. There are countries with iron yes. ore that has not been tapped. Gold yes. reserves that have not been tapped. Agricultural land that has not been tapped. And right now, what I heard you say is the music industry. There is so much wealth that has not yet been tapped. So many songs yes. that have not been sung. Yes. So many giftings that have not been expressed. And and that really should yes. be a serious encouragement to those that were thinking, should I, shouldn't I? I think really, really, this is the best time for African artists to arise. Yes. And and just 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 to, to, to tell, give other artists out there uh, an expo, just to give just to give other artists out there an expo that they may not know. So I, my music is usually so African mm -hmm. and foreigners listen to it and most times they don't even understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But African melody is so beautiful uh -huh. that it grabs everybody's attention. Wow. And then there's, 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 there's what not understanding what an artist is saying in the music does to a listener. Mm -hmm. It makes you want to listen more and mm -hmm. closer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, wow, wow! It's 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 a secret people don't know, uh -huh. it, and it also makes them it also makes them want to follow you because they want to be able to understand. It's like it's like something. It's like you record to them because they have not heard this before. They don't understand it, yeah. so they want to follow you to know more. They want to come into your culture. They want to experience your culture. And this is the field for this is the time for you to export your culture, make your your land proud. If you're South African. This time for you to make South Africa proud and the rest of Africa proud. If yes, you're Nigerian, sir. If you're a Namibian, if you're a Zambian, be 100% Zambian and be proud. Come on. Support your culture. Come on. Wow. Thank you so much, yeah. Lima. We we have been we have received more than than we thought. This has been really going beyond the call of duty. And I'd really love to reconnect again with you uh, sometime in the future, just to if we can do a beautiful. Yeah. Zoom coaching session for, for artists here in South Africa. We connect yeah. a whole bunch of musicians and we just give you a platform yeah. just to speak to them, to coach them, to encourage them, and to tell them a little bit about your journey, all the details, the disappointments, yeah. the excitements, the breakthroughs, how you came to, to where you are. It would really be an awesome uh, opportunity and we can move you into a powerful coaching yeah. session for us. Thank you so yeah, much. God, God. That would actually be amazing. Well, big shout out to Harold. Harold has been so instrumental in our community. Yeah, yeah. Like Harold is one person that has pushed for unity amongst African artists. Yeah. The first time I knew the first set of African artists that I knew, it was thanks to Harold. It so, was Harold. Yeah. I mean, South Africa, you guys have a gem right there with you. Harold is a gem. Absolutely. Harold is Harold. Harold has a lot of power in his hands, and Harold is making good use of the power he has in his hands. Absolutely. And big shout out to him. Absolutely. I totally agree. He's an amazing man and I love his vision. Yeah. But let's 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 take Africa to the next level. Let's take the music Definitely. industry to the next level. I'm glad to be connected to you and we're gonna do great things together. Definitely, sir. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, that was Limo Blaze. Awesome, awesome artist. Please look for him. Please tell us where can we, f you mentioned earlier, Facebook, it's Limo Blaze yeah. and Instagram, Limo Blaze underscore. Yeah, Facebook, Limo Blaze, Instagram, Limo Blaze underscore. For those who don't know, Limo Blaze is spelled L-I-M-O-B-L-A-Z-E. My music is on YouTube. Uh, Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, wherever, Audio Map, wherever you want to listen from, my music is there. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. That's Limo Blaze for you. Thank you so much for joining us on 52 Days of Rebuilding the Walls of Africa. We're looking at the mountain of the arts, the music industry, arts, film, etc. And we are going to see a major work of God in the next few years as we continue to focus and discover the great potential that God has given to us. Join us again tomorrow, 8 p.m. South African time, and we're going to have a great time. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing DJ Afra and my homeboy, Limo. Oh, 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 o